Okay, so we're gonna take a look here at subsurface. So the first thing here I'm gonna do is to essentially turn my diffuse off. I'm gonna hit render here. We're gonna have nothing here. So now I'm gonna go into my subsurface and enable this one and set it to one. And we can see here, it looks kind of funky. So I have this object here that on the length here, if I zoom out, it's a 10 centimeter object. It's one centimeter in this direction. So essentially this part here is like one millimeter. And here when it tapes down, it's five millimeters. So I kind of have like a known dimension on this object. So we can see here what, what subsurface actually do. So the first thing here we have in our subsurface settings is the different modes here. So you can see here we have Jensen dipole. All of these here are essentially old ones that is still shipping here. For example, you have this Jensen dipole. You have the Dion Better dipole. Multimine free path. This one is more like an art directable version where you can set different depth what you color you want through this different depth fairly normalized and exponential on exponential path trace. Uh, we're gonna take a look here at the exponential path trace here first. You can see here we have quite aggressive. We have a, a uh, an area light right outside of view here, essentially shining down onto the object. So we can see here. And here the the color here is where you would insert the diffuse color on, on your object. And and this one, the mean free path color is essentially the subsurface color, like the blood or whatever uh, medium your object consists of, usually some kind of skin color. I usually tint this towards a bit like a red for subsurface for skin. This mean free path distance is essentially multiplied for this color. So this one will be in units, 10 units in. But you also have a unit subsurface is heavily depending on uh, your scene scale. And that's why you have this scattering global here. So for example, now here it's set to 0.1 and that's a millimeter. So if I will go in here and say in my uh, subsurface setting here, my mean free path color set this to essentially something like red we can see here. Now we can see here how far into the object we get this color. It's 10 units. Let's make a test here. So I'm gonna set my scattering here to 0, 0, 1 so we can see here. And then I'm gonna set my subsurface mean free path to 10. So essentially I'm dividing my scattering by 0, 0, 1 and setting this to 10 here and I'm gonna store this one now when it's converge a bit snap it there and then se let's set this one up to to zero one and set this you see now is we get this super hot behavior here but if I now go in here and say one here instead it's gonna be the same identical output so the scene scale is very important it should be almost identical depending on when I snap this how long I let it converge if I go in and view this image we can see here zero difference between these two you you need to figure out what scene scale your scene is in by default uh, the pixel surface is set to zero one and that's kind of millimeters then you have here essentially diffuse blend you can see here now it's uh, set to zero so now it's fully subsurface if I start to dial this one up to one here you essentially will get zero subsurface and now we're only seeing this color so this is where you would insert your diffuse color on your object maybe you want a bit of diffuse and this is the way you can start to dial in essentially if you want some of this diffuse color essentially overriding the subsurface just for energy compensation or something okay so let's jump over to another object now and take a look at uh, this more in practice here's our object it's a um, essentially garden statue and you can see here we, we don't have anything i'm just gonna now here turn on my diffuse turn on subsurface on this one we can start to see it a mo bit more here uh, of more sensible forms you can see here the scene scale on this one so we can either go in here and say zero one like this uh, and see here or we can keep it at, at one go in here and say subsurface one millimeter or something like that and we can then see here take subsurface color towards something a bit more reddish gonna take this diffuse color down a bit and we can see here started to getting this color scattered through the medium there what happens if we for example hook up a uh, subsurface color i'm just gonna borrow one here let's take this one see here we're starting to get like details in the subsurface so let's overcrank this to to something that's like 10 units or something 
and we can start to see here the texture that we have there is now starting to show up in the subsurface so where it was darker it's gonna block some of the light and you can see here some of this is really starting to play into how the subsurface is coming through so let's take a look at this image here again this is the subsurface image that i'm using here and um, it's a bit too much detail so i'm just gonna take this one pump it into my diffuse color here into my mean free path color and let's take a look at what this one is doing here instead taking my pure color and blending it in here to reduce the contrast and now let's take a look here what you see here you can get some of that detail coming in and i i rendered here a uh, a pre-render here where I'm essentially adjusting this uh, unit length here. So, so this one, 10 units, 20 units, and 50 units. And you can see here, the higher the units, the more of that underlying texture is coming through. And there is starting to look like, you can see here, I was bleeding uh, and there as well. Let's hook that shader up instead, where it's already up and running there. So this is the one I rendered. Uh, to this one I hooked up my incoming color is looking like this for the diffuse color it looks like that I have my subsurface color here looking like so and then I have specular roughness or and bump coming in here as well and that gives that result I have here 50 units but I tweaked my unit length to 001 because this object was so small but I could have done this instead like so and then went in here and say five units it's gonna be the same result so it depends on your scene scale there so let's take a look here at these uh, different uh, subsurface models here comparison so i have here i didn't render the multiple mean free path because it's so different to to the others when it comes to settings we have here i just have a mean free path distance five and this color here a cycle jensen dn better and burly and exponential path trace so let's take a look here so the burly looks like this you can see here it, it, it's a bit weird i guess I have an extreme depth here, so uh, some of this inversion colors here is probably coming from, from that. These old models usually had some kind of strange greenish tint uh, that I, I think they all suffer from in some extent with, with big, um, like with large depths. So let's uh, Burly, DM better. It looks better than Burly for sure. <laughs> but this one too is, is very similar. This one feels a bit better than dipole burly uh yeah you can see here but yeah so exponential path trace this one yeah it, it definitely preserves more forms and you can see you know clearly the, the depth here is it's a lot better than this one however this one quite a lot more noise in um and needs to converge so the render times will go up when using this exponential path trace now here just switch this over to uh, you have this another one here the non-exponential path trace and this one here let's let's take this one to one path here and then you have this bleed option this is super sensitive if you set this to one it will go nuts here start to go nuts so the yeah the bleed option in this non-exponential path trace is super sensitive in my opinion take a look at the directionality we can see here when i render this one directionality zero it looks like this when i set this one up to 95 here get this one this is essentially uh, when it sets to higher values it's scattering more forward scattering according to this uh, hint here I mean, it's a, some kind of scattering anisotropy this one the next setting here is essentially follow topology you can see here the difference between and uh, that's set to zero and one. According to the tool tip here, it says the follow topology parameter reduces SS from one side to another in concave regions such as crevices. And then you can kind of see that here when I set this up. So that's something you can play with to get a bit of um, essentially information back. I mean, this one is now super abrupt, this SSS. So this diffuse compensation, I have very little uh, knowledge in how this one works to be honest something about speed up it's on by default so 
I have never really played with this one. Post tint, I always have this white because this one would start to tint the whole object, kind of breaks physicality even more. Essentially get an extra tint on top of the object, but yeah, I, I haven't really used it that way. So In the next episode, we're gonna take a look at the single scatter component. If you wanna support my channel, consider dropping a comment in one of the videos with information of upcoming episodes you wanna see from Measurement Studio. See you in the channel, bye bye.